spiritually I'm straight um mentally I'm straight so like now it's time like to put out a project and I don't mean like now it's time like I'm about to blow up now like you know what I mean like because I hate when people do that but like yeah like now I'm like yeah. in, a, in a better position Welcome back, everybody, to the Soul Serum Podcast. I am your Live Forever host, Clay Bonin. I am joined by my Come Out to My Galaxy co-host, Tanner Mavis. And we are back, baby. We are back on the podcast, back with an interview. And as a matter of fact, on the show, we are joined for the second time by this artist. He's in a very exclusive Two Soul Serum podcast club. Um, He's originally from North Carolina, but musically, he's from somewhere in outer space. Since we last talked, he's hit the college concert circuit. He's dropped multiple singles, including one with Patrick CC, shout out to the GOAT, and released a music video with yours truly at the top of the year for Live Forever. Today on the show, we have Deucey Gold. Can we, get, can we get a clap from the studio audience? <laughs> well, I'm going to put the effect in after that. Welcome back, dude. Welcome back. Nice to, nice to see you guys again. Man, I'm happy you're here. You got a cup. You just had breakfast. We got we got it all taken care of at the studio. We good. We good. I'm going to take a sip right now. You got to let them know what we just... Uh, what you just cooked up in our microwave. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just had some bagel bites. <laughs> yes, sir. From, Breakfast of champions. From your neighborhood, Kroger. <laughs> sure. Sh- big shout out, Kroger. Kroger, if you want to sponsor us, ho- <laughs> holler. Uh, man, I'm happy to have you back on the show. We were talking a little bit before we started recording, but you were on episode 10 of the podcast. You were so Damn, early on. And we're at, I'm good. this is going to be, I think, 87 or 88, depending on when this comes out. So, you know, I'm... I'm thankful that you're still doing music and I'm thankful that you're back with us. So. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I uh I think like just my relationship with people that I build with mm-hmm. uh is something that I, you know, would love to carry on throughout my life and I feel like that's what I have done with you guys, you know. Yeah. Just like kept a good solid relationship and just, you know, see see each other grow. Yeah. And so it's natural sure. that we link back up. 100%. Definitely. Definitely. Well, let's get right into it. So uh, not too long after you released Live Forever, which again, music video by yours truly, go watch that right now. Uh, right now. <laughs> on, on Instagram, you posted something along the lines of like, maybe I'll go on a podcast and explain what this song is about. Uh, so you guys be talking. Well, here, we, here, we, here we are. Here we are. We're on the podcast. So, right. so talk to me. What is, what is Live Forever about? What does the song mean for you? So like, basically... Live Forever, when me and shout out A.O. Witt, um, me and him, that's my tour DJ, also one of my like main producers. Mm-hmm. When me and he was cooking that song up, um, you know, I've been I've been on this like recent kick. Like, I believe that music is like a, a living thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's literally like a living thing. And I can go into more detail about that if y'all want. But yeah. basically, like, you know, I come to this conclusion that music is a living thing. And I'm just like, OK, well, how can I like portray that? in a way through music um, that's also like true to me. Mm -hmm. And um, really just Live Forever was more so a way for me to show like people that like of what I'm in music for. Like I'm in music as a vessel basically just just to convey what music is already, is already like, it already has. (laughs) Yeah. And so for me, it's just like, if I die tomorrow, my music's gonna live forever because it's out there. Like people actually like connect with it. And so mm-hmm. that that like not only the music itself will live forever, but like the connection it makes with people yes. will live forever in yeah. their memories. And so that's really what it is. That intangible feeling that you get when you when the song hits just right. Exactly. Like that's what's living forever, is kind of what you're saying. Exactly. Cause it's like I said, like if I die tonight, then I'll live forever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like I feel like you know, it's not just music, but like if you do anything that's like worth doing, mm-hmm. like it's going to live on through like your story. Definitely. And that's what it really is. That's what it really means. Like people were making up random ass shit like <laughs> about what it meant and like what they thought, like comments and back and shit. And yeah. like, no, bro, that shit. I don't know what the fuck they were talking about, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what it means. It's, yeah. It's so crazy you explain it that way because like, you know, we're we're not artists per se we Mm -hmm. interview artists and we're very fond of and you know appreciate what you all you know contribute to life Mm -hmm. in general Mm -hmm. for sure but like being able to interview artists on here 
like for example when jack case came on here he said something in a similar way you said it in your own words but like he pretty much explained it as like you know music is music and the words and that he put that you know he puts down into a song it's already there in what he called the collective consciousness mm -hmm. and he yeah. is just yeah and he is just like the vessel like you just you just work, use the word vessel and you're the one you know kind of you know manifesting that already living thing that exactly. you had already said and like i don't know it was just i just like when you said that i just made the connection to the jack case no interview. for real it's, it's like, actually it, crazy how similar yeah. like you like you said they both said it differently but it's the same yeah. if you know that's you the know idea mind. yes exactly <laughs> that's you know, the artist's you know. mind right there like and i feel like a lot of what you're talking about with this too is like legacy and it goes along with legacy and i know like we've talked about it before but like that's like a major reason for like yeah. why we do any of this right is to leave a legacy mm -hmm. to give that feeling to somebody else you know like when we're dead and gone like like my kids grandkids can go back on youtube if youtube's still a thing or exactly. like <laughs> like you can go i'm sure you, you'll be able to go back to the youtube archives yeah. and go see all of our music videos all of our oh, interviews yeah. like it's the gonna be on there the you youtube I mean? archives are gonna be crazy yeah when we're, when crazy. we're grandparents <laughs> Facts. Facts. um but you said also uh explain a little bit more about like you said music is a living thing yeah like, just talk to me a little bit more about that so like one thing that i feel like people don't actually know about me like and like, it was just like, you you know, we were saying uh, before we got on like the air or whatever, mm -hmm. um, like I, I don't actually talk to a lot of people. So I feel like, like people like that are like true fans of me, they know me like, and they know mm -hmm. how, like how I am and shit. But like, I feel like most people don't actually know, like I'm very intellectual and like, I'd be thinking like hella, like mm -hmm. about just not only music, but just like life in general. And right. so like, really, um, I feel like consciousness, like we are self-aware, like, yeah, that's a consciousness that we have, or we have consciousness. I feel like music um, it's just another form of consciousness, but it only can manifest itself uh, through us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and through humans. Um, and that's why we connect with it so much. Yeah. Because it's just another form of consciousness. And I feel like consciousness is like God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, God the is source. like omnipresent and everything like that. And I don't want to get like, you know, too like religious or whatever, but, right. you know, I feel like, you know, music is just another form of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so it's already alive it's just using me to like you know you feel like the message across and like yeah. other humans are able to re relate to it because it, it came through you yeah exactly and that's like why i don't really um like as i know like i've been making music since i was like 15 16 mm -hmm. and like i'm still doing it because it's like it's a, a lifelong journey for me like i don't yeah. i don't make music because like i want to be like the most famous like famous person ever like i want to be the greatest artist of all time just like, as a competitor right and like, this is my sport and this is like what I do. But like, you know, I, I'm willing to wait. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like <laughs> I make music because like, that's just what I'm like here doing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. It's, it's funny you said, me and my friend Ian were talking yesterday. If, I don't know if you all know who Iggy Pop is, but he's like this, he's this uh, rock and roller. He's like one of the first people to ever really make punk music. And he just released an album three weeks ago, 75 years old. And he just released an album. He doesn't have to. Iggy Pop is rich. He doesn't really have to do that. Right. But I was like, that makes me so happy because that just means that he doesn't give a fuck whether he was a pioneer of punk rock or if he was just a guy with a keyboard in his house like right. he's still making music and that is his like passion it's a part of him he's a vessel right he's a vessel for yeah. it that just gets me i'm just I'm juiced i love <laughs> i love when people are passionate about this shit man i love it sure. um let's talk a little bit about some music that you've released since the last time we talked um to me, it kind of seems like you've been testing some different flavors. <laughs> yeah. Like I've I've heard you on some rage. I've heard you on some club type, some plug and B esque mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, what have you discovered about your art from experimenting <laughs> with these sounds? I discovered like, bro, like, I, like on the most the most humble way possible. I really like just am versatile as hell. Like I don't like. I don't go into the studio and just feel like, ah, damn, like I can only do like, like trap shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I might go into the studio and be like, with a with a damn a female or some shit. And mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just being around a female is gonna naturally make me like make music a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the vibe. Like I literally create off the vibe. Yeah. And so like, yeah, like I just be experimenting and shit. And like, don't get me wrong, like I'm definitely like aware of like 
like when it comes to like projects and stuff, like mm. how to make something cohesive. But at the same time, when it's just like singles, cause you know, like singles is like, more my fuck. Singles in like the industry is like the way to go. You know, right. if like until you make it like, you know, singles, singles, singles. So it's like, if I'm gonna just do that, then I'm gonna just keep trying shit because mm -hmm. you know, like I really just, I don't know, man. Like I just like to experiment and yeah, that's really it. Like, and you, you haven't released a project since like our podcast interview, yeah. uh, which is, which is crazy. It was like over two years ago to think about, but know, <laughs> like your project was coming out like right after that interview and you've just been kind of on a singles thing since then. Mm -hmm. But you talked a little bit just now about like albums. Do you have, do you feel pressure to put a project together? Do you have something that you're working on right we now? We working on something crazy right now. Mm -hmm. We working on something insane. Okay. Um, and like you, most people like, anybody watching this like artists will really feel me like i don't give a fuck what you do like musically like if you independent which i am mm -hmm. like you have life shit going on like that like may like make you have to take a step back or not even a, t a step back but you just gotta like figure this shit out over here real quick right but the music is still there like especially if you are someone like me that's like it's a part of you and you just make music like mm -hmm. so I you, were, you were speaking true facts to, 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 to us right now. Yeah. You're speaking yeah. true facts. Yeah, so like... And we're getting older, bro. You, you, like When you get older, you just have more responsibilities. Exactly, yeah. naturally, which I'm cool with. And I like... The older and older I get, I learn how to like portray that, like those feelings and emotions through mm -hmm. my music, which I didn't know how to do when I was younger. So it was easy for me to put out a project when I was younger because it was just like some songs that I was throwing together because I was still learning what music was even like, what I was even doing with it. Mm -hmm. But now like... I'm in no rush to like put a project out just to put a project out like right. all these like different like outside opinions and shit like I don't bro I don't <laughs> I don't like you don't subscribe listen. to any of that mm -hmm. like I live my life and I do what I think is best for me and like, obviously I get advice from people that I trust um but at the end of the day like you know I feel like now I'm in a position where like financially I'm straight um spiritually I'm straight um, mentally I'm straight so like now it's time like to put out a project and I don't mean like now it's time like I'm about to blow up now like you know what I mean like cause I hate when people do that but like yeah like now I'm like yeah. in, a, in a better position I've experimented a lot so I like not only have like data mm -hmm. um, from like my songs and seeing what like people like analytical data and shit like that that's a good point you know what I mean so I know what like people like yeah and what like is gonna like move people a certain way yeah. Um, I know my demographics. And so now it's like, you know, I'm just older and I'm more experienced. And like, if you do it the right way, like the older and older you get and the more experiences you get, you should learn from them yeah. and be able to put a better product out in the end. So that's what I'm doing now. Definitely. It's very refreshing to hear because like you said, in the music industry, it's a very, um, you know, not only single driven, like, but that your output in general, as far as not even music, just content, yeah. TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yeah, short form videos like post every day. I'm make still getting better. See, at that. Make people see you like this right. and that. Like like all that. Like all that's important. Like to an extent, and you need to be you know visible, especially independent artists. And you gotta show people that you know you're still around, still doing your thing, right. and mm -hmm. tap in with fans and whatnot. But you know the far as far as like the quality of music and like what you're saying, like taking care of things outside of music and making sure you know everything's tied up and you're you know you're taking care of business and taking care of life, your yeah. life in general, that in that way, you'll be able to authentically be yourself right, when right. you're yes. making the music and make the highest quality music exactly. possible. Yeah. And that takes time, like just like that you were talking about. So yeah, not for sure. I respect that. And it's definitely refreshing to hear from, you know, an artist that we've worked with. And definitely. We, we choose, yeah. we pick great artists to work with, bro. Like I swear, we do, I swear, we do a great man. job. <clears throat> but I do think that that like in a, in a, way is related to what Deucey was saying earlier about like you know it's all like we're all a part of this collective in this consciousness but like we have look this is a buzzword I'm gonna say it we've manifested yeah. right we've <laughs> manifested the way that we can work with other people you know we don't just go straight off like all right they dm'd us they have 9,000 followers sure let's work you know like we mm -hmm. we've kind of manifested that for ourselves yep um 
still sticking on the music here. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the Patrick CC locked in video. Again, shout out to the goat. Shout out yep. to Patrick CC. That's my guy. That's my guy. Um, it looked like such a fun space to create in. Like watching that video, I like couldn't help but smile. Like it just seemed like a lot of fun. Um, and credit to you all for making a banger too. Just talk to me. What was that experience like? Like was it just as fun in real life as it seems on the video? Oh, bro. Shout out Galaxy. Galaxy about to hit 500k on Spotify. Damn, um, that's out. crazy. Um, no promo really, other than other than the video. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. Patrick CC is one of the most like. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Mm, um, he seems like it for real. Yeah, and very smart. I don't know if Patrick would feel comfortable with me saying this, but I'm gonna say it. Like Patrick, <laughs> if you know him, he kind of has like a chip on his shoulder, but it's not like a negative thing. Like mm -hmm. he just is like. He doesn't give a fuck what anybody is saying, what anybody is doing. He's like thinking like himself. He, he's truly himself. And he kind of like has like a chip on his shoulder where like, you know, people are doing that. But like, I'm gonna do me. And like, I don't give a fuck if y'all don't like it type shit. Yeah. And I like, I caught that energy like when I first met him and I just loved it because like, I'm the kind of person where like, I love people just being themselves, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't give a fuck what your clout level is. Like, I don't care about none of that, bro. Yeah. Like, I just want you to be yourself and we can vibe, you feel me? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I sound like a New York dude when I said that, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> um, Yo, dead ass, be yourself, Yo, dead be. ass, be. <laughs> But um, in the black puffer too. Oh God! Like, and you got the New York hat on, yes, sir. Yo, this is the best. This is the hottest podcast in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Word to my mother. Yeah, and, and he got a bev. <laughs> and he got the bev. Oh um, God! But anyway, but anyway though, Patrick CC, that's that's cool though, because I I do get that kind of sense from him that he does kind of have that like like I'm gonna do it my way, mm -hmm. like because he's a very unique creator in this yeah. space already. So. Yeah. Like, I mean, as people in the comments of that video are like, I've never seen anything like this. Like, I've never seen any type of content like this before. Right. And I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, damn, they are right. Like, this is a truly <laughs> unique thing. And it just it was a really cool, uh, like, experience and process to watch. I didn't even answer your question e either, honestly, because you was like, uh, you know, was that really as fun as it looked? Oh, yeah. And yeah. I really just started like I, I kind of like honed in just on Patrick. Shout out to Patrick. Yeah, yeah, Patrick's my guy for real. Yeah. Um, like me and Patrick, like text, like call, like. You feel me? If I like really need to talk to Patrick, like just about life shit, like mm -hmm. I'll, I can call Patrick. Fuck yeah. Um, but no, it was definitely fun. Um, and shout out Odie too. He was the, uh, the, the engineer. engineer. Nice. Um, Odie's my guy too. But it was really fun because I didn't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And I actually had to go dolo. Um, I went out there by myself because I was supposed to take like um, my team at the time, like mm -hmm. my former team, um, and it just didn't work out. Honestly, on some like shady shit, low key, like I had, I just went dolo. Cause like at the time, that was like damn near the biggest opportunity I have ever had before the Kyle Beat shit. Yeah. And so like <laughs> I was like, damn, y'all don't wanna come? Like, all right, bet, I'm going dolo. So anyway, that shit happened. And like, yeah, bro, it was just, I didn't know what to expect. And like once I found out that me and Patrick was gonna be able to like really kick it, like I stayed at his crib, bro. I stayed like with him and his girl. And like, I damn near had an asthma attack because he had a cat and I'm allergic to cats oh, and shit. Yeah, I'm allergic to cats too. <laughs> oh, so like, shit. but uh, it was just a real genuine, like real genuine vibe. And so like, obviously like once we get in the studio, that's my element. So, you know, we having fun. I'm cracking jokes. I'm eating damn croissants. Like, you know how it is. So yeah, bro, that shit was definitely fun. And it's no wonder we made a banger ass song. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, a really creative song too. Who was the producer on that and, song? Um, damn, Brody. I, I, I think it I was. Know. I think you it have was that beer Brody. No, Patrick no. For you? And that's why I don't know because I know all my producers. I'm locked in with all my producers, but Patrick had that beat. Like oh, he so had that's a what list it was. He he probably had a bunch of beats, and, yeah. and then you kind of just like went through them and yeah, and found yeah. one. Exactly. It says uh, Brody. That's really cool. So he was Rod really Brody. on some like, you know, executive producing. Nah, he really like, was. DJ yeah. Patrick. <laughs> nah, and I gotta I gotta shout him out more, bro, because like people be trying to uh, like I've seen like comments, like obviously, you know, he has a great fan base. And so mm -hmm. he has like it's a lot of people. Natural like, when he get, when you get that big. Like yeah. he's grown a lot. Yeah. In the bro. last like year or so. It's just, like actually. For sure. People was like talking crazy, like, he don't know anything about music. Why he in there? Like 
all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, he he knew exactly what the fuck he was talking about. Like yeah. the, the like suggestions and shit that he was making made the song. Like literally made the song. Yeah. That's awesome. And so like, yeah, bro, I can't speak highly more highly of him. That's honestly. so far. Is it Soul Serum needs to do something like I mean we we put together a Soul Serum album one time, but it was like when we were like we weren't at nearly as big as we were. It was like the yeah, I need to run it with back. like all local yeah. local artists, but like man, yeah, we should run that back. It would be cool. It would be cool to do something like that. Maybe put out as a Soul Serum, but like yeah. just like do it. Patrick did like like rent like out the get, studio. Get a space. whole folder of beats for like Deucey, like thirty mm-hmm. beats, and like oh, we we think Deucey would sound fire on this, and then yeah. like let him go through them, and then like we kind of help him put the song together. Yeah, get Rocco in there, like. That yeah, that we do, we do have artists. an in-house producer basically with, yeah. with Rocco. And we got engineers that we know around here. It'd be yeah. easy. Yeah. Uh I keep it on the subject though. I, I am curious, like, is it weird to have somebody maybe weird isn't the right word, but is it different to have somebody kind of like curate your creativity in a sense? Cause in our last interview, uh like one of the things that we talked about is you feel like when you go into the studio, I mean, we kind of joked about it, but you were like, <laughs> oh, I yeah. feel like you're like, I feel like I have the better bar. Like who's going to suggest the bar to me? Cause I feel like I'm always going to have the better bar. I feel like I have a better bar than what somebody else is going to say. You know what I mean? Like, and like, we got to hop, but like, I know in a way that is, that's how you feel to a certain degree. Right. So that's like, the, that's the, like, that's my ego speaking right there, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I'm just older now, so like I don't think like that. Like from experiences like that, like yeah, you know, like if you would have asked Ducey back then, like, yo, you think Patrick CC can help you like make a song? Like I'd be like, hell no, bro. You don't know what you're talking about. But you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. my experiences as I get older, like just showed me, like open my eyes and like mm-hmm. really, like honestly, like um, psychedelics helped me with that too. Like not let my ego like be so like strong yeah you know what i'm saying like i really just like let go and like just be like all right you know i take shit for what it is and not for what it should be or what i want it to be so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. now nowadays bro i'm open to suggestions and don't get me wrong when i'm in the studio like if you got a you got about 10 seconds before i'm gonna come up with a bar you know because <laughs> yeah. i don't write anymore so like you got about 10 seconds to say something that's harder than what i'm thinking <laughs> you know what i'm saying but you know if you do say something i'm like okay yeah. I'm going to say it. I'm going to try it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I'm, that's the point I'm at now. With with that being said, do you think, like, more artists could benefit from that process of creating rather than just, like, punching themselves in and, like, the kitchen or something, you know, like, having somebody with a vision there to help curate a song? I feel like more artists do than we, like, are, like, than we really think. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. I feel like all the big artists, like, yeah, that's what their process signed. is. They all got A&Rs to help oh, yeah. them curate mm-hmm. their shit. Yeah. Because, I mean, all you got to do, and for anybody that's watching, if you want to know if somebody write their shit, just go to Apple Music or Spotify mm-hmm. and then so go to credits. song credits. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be like 10 motherfuckers <laughs> on a <the> thing. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's all you got to yeah. do. I saw a funny thing about like splits and credits uh, on TikTok. Somebody was like, all right, what if somebody came to the studio and was like trying to help produce the beat, but they actually went to go to McDonald's to get food for everybody. The song gets made while they're gone. And then they come back with the McDonald's. You put him on the writing credits? <laughs> you put nah. him on the... <laughs> nah. Well, it depends on you who got- the artist is. Is it Drake? Because <laughs> if it's Drake, if it's Drake, Drake's like, yo, uh, I actually don't want to make music. I need to go get a Big Mac meal. Uh, I'll be back. Right. Like, yeah, Drake, you can still get writing credits. Yeah. It. Yeah. Well, you know, like when you get in those high level rooms or like those like serious rooms, like if you if, if someone bought the studio session, like technically they own the record. Like, for mm. example, like so like let's say all of us went to the studio. Right. We all went to the studio. I'm the artist. But you bought the session. When we leave the studio, the engineer, by law, if if the studio has their like their shit set up the right way, mm. by law they have to send you the the, the files. Mm. So you own the record. Mm. Now, when we go to release it on DSPs and stuff like that, you got to cut me off because I I wrote it and I you know I, you know you in the yeah. I performed it, but you still own the record. So therefore, you control like how it gets split up mm. because you own the like file that was made. Yeah. Now, if I went and recreated it or whatever. So that's that record label shit. That's that record label shit. Yeah. And like, so <laughs> thankfully I'm independent and I don't really have to worry about shit like that. Like uh-huh. I operate off of like just straight organic, like love and like 
understanding like, all right, but if you put in work on this song, like you're going to get broken off, period. For sure. You know what For I'm sure. saying? And that's how I operate. Like it really makes it easy that way. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's 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 talk about something else because in our first interview, we were still pretty like heavy in the pandemic. So nobody was performing live. Mm. And since then, you went on like this college circuit. That is what I'm calling it. At yeah, least. yeah, yeah. And like Tanner and I went to a relatively small school. Shout out Northern Kentucky. I mean, but, it wasn't that small. But but I mean like like fifteen thousand people. But I feel like what what I mean is like on campus events, like homecomings and yeah, things like that. Like, like we still we went didn't have Greek housing, right? Like right. That. But we still <laughs> at a smaller school with the small student body still went crazy and still went hard. Yeah. And, and he's like performing at like frat houses. And that's shit. what and I'm have saying. A whole stage set up. So yeah. I want to know like what? Just talk to me about like some of the schools you performed at. Like what were those experiences <laughs> like, bro? I don't been to like probably like 15 schools in the past year uh-huh and like i want to do more and like i'm about to probably do more this year and it's um, like mostly kind of like southern and like coastal schools SEC right schools. sec schools yeah, yeah for the most part because they have the most money like if we just keep yeah. it up facts like, facts um, can, you, can you like um tell us like how you're getting these shows booked i got a good team around me like gotcha. now I got a good team around me That helps me like With logistics and everything yep. like, Shout out my boy Rod Shout out my boy Jay Shout out Rod um, Shout out so, Jay So yeah I got a good team around me And like it makes it just easier So like whenever you got A good system in place Like you can just do more mm -hmm. So that's why you see me Doing more shows And shit like that Yeah um, But yeah <laughs> What was What was the wildest school That you think you performed at I'm just curious Wildest crowd Like what was Wildest crowd Yeah Dude <sighs> Cause you went to like Auburn, you went to, did you go to UNC, right? Yeah, I went to UNC. Um, I went to, I mean, I'm going to Texas Tech in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, I went to Texas Tech and open for Shaq. Um, oh, that's going to be October. lit. No, I no, I did that Oh, already. you did that. Yeah, you did that it already. Was lit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was previously lit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Wilder School, honestly, I really had to, I would say probably like, Man, it's hard to beat Auburn. Like they just go crazy for anything. Like yeah, they just go crazy, man. And um, like the first time I went there, I opened for DJ Carnage, mm -hmm. and like Damn. it was. Far. I I I mean no I mean no disrespect to Carnage, but like he had just gotten back from like Europe. He was doing like some crazy tour. So like I went out there and like you know this was like my first show of like my little mini tour, and like. I was going crazy. Had them, I had people stage diving. Like, they was going stupid. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when Carnage came on, you know, he was just doing his, his DJ shit. And, like, you, you could tell, like, he was just picking up a back end just so he can get yeah. it. Yeah, um, yeah. And all the, all the uh, dudes from the frat, they was like, oh, bro, like, you went way way harder than Carnage. Like, da, 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 da. And I was just like, I mean, bro, like, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, yeah, like, Auburn, bro, like, you know, them – they love me out there and it's just like they go crazy so yeah i definitely have to say them just by default like uh -huh. they just got more numbers for real yeah <laughs> that's fine you know what i'm saying what what school felt like it had the most deucey gold fans though um unc probably unc or or auburn for real for real like bro i'm telling you auburn really like they booked me again for uh for 420 for some reason, I don't even know what it is. I'm just pulling up. Like, <laughs> like they just be booking me. It's shit crazy. Um, but yeah, like <laughs> definitely Auburn Auburn's in Alabama, right? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. It in Alabama. Okay, mm -hmm. I gotta look at. I gotta Auburn see is it on in the Auburn. map real quick. Is it Auburn, Alabama? Is yeah. that the name of the town? I Auburn. honestly didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Alabama. Yeah. Um, what? Shout what? out Cam Newton. <laughs> shout out Cam Newton. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. Pike. I need to be on the roster. On. He what? He need to be on a roster somewhere, bro. I know. I'm like, I'm a big Cam. Dude People were comparing fans. him to Josh Allen on Twitter. Uh, In what capacity? We, that Cam Newton is is better than the prime Cam Newton. Okay, see, so now they wilding now. They That's wilding. they wilding now. Like right now, currently. <sighs> yeah, because nah. Josh Allen hasn't been able to get over the hump. I mean, and Cam Newton got Cam the Super Bowl. did go to the Super Bowl, did get the MVP. Yeah. That is that is true. He definitely has more credentials than Josh Allen. Oh yeah, if we're talking point. career, yeah, but yeah. like right now, yeah, hell no. Cam Newton is prime <laughs> over Josh Allen or no? Oh hell yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What, yeah, that's that's what, what I'm saying. saying. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cam Newton over prime Josh Allen. Well, we ain't seen prime Josh Allen, have we? I feel like I feel we've like seen we like a game yeah. or two. I guess we gotta of give it. him like three, three more years probably. I feel like this is like his like what his fourth year in the league. I think so. Yeah, yeah. he got he's way lost more in time. Divisional. 
three years yeah. in a row. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. Who day? Who day? Go, <laughs> go Bengals. Go Bengals. Um, all right. And la lastly, on this college circuit, what – well, this kind of – I said I asked who was the wildest crowd, but what, what songs seem to get the crowd – the craziest that you perform like what do you what's your what's your go-to green is a ham for sure mm -hmm. that's just got that like uh it's, featuring big baby gucci shout out Gucci. yeah um yeah. that definitely I can gets see them. that because it's like up tempo too i can see yeah. people and people it's, it's funny that. about about uh green is a ham so i hit up i hit up gucci right to get a feature and he was like yeah bro like no doubt like i'm gonna send you a pre-made hook so he sent me Green Eggs and Ham was his song. He sent it to me like his verse that's in the middle of the song was like the uh -huh. beginning. And so I had to rework the whole song to put like a hook. And like, so yeah. that song is crazy. Just like in the fact that it took me so long to make it. And I was like really like detail oriented on that song. Uh huh. So that one for sure. So it probably feels rewarding that that oh, song yeah. goes oh, yeah. crazy live. Then. But that's the one like on my Instagram, like when the motherfucker was like jumping off the stage and they caught him and that shit was crazy, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like I played that shit. Um, and then... I'm trying to think what other songs. There's like. that one video you posted. I think when you're performing Moonlight, and everybody yeah, has like the fucking that. cameras on. I'm just like, the oh lights. shit. Yeah, that was, yeah, really, that was, that was like, like right after we went, dropped the video too. I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah Moonlight, wild. Moonlight definitely because like that's one of the ones that the females can get into too, mm -hmm. and they like for for the most part, I feel like they know the words and shit too. So like that's really just crazy. Like hearing them like sing it with me is just like yeah. really like crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I, gotta, remember, I remember. I think I saw a snippet one time of you performing that uh, unreleased song with you and E. Oh yeah, um, uh, Moody. Ooh. Yeah, Moody. That, that's that's been the ball for a while, but I, yeah, bro. I forgot about that. shout out E to Profit, man. That's my guy. I Me and him just got in the studio one. randomly when I was still living in Columbus, and he just went stupid on a fucking <laughs> verse and so yeah, we still got that in the vault. I mean, we probably need to get more in for real, for real yeah. but yeah. You know how I go. For yeah. sure. Oh, no. But I, I, I just remember that, that just came to mind when I'm thinking of all the videos that I saw of you. Yeah. That was probably over a year ago. <laughs> nah, yes. Yeah. And uh, shout out Zero McKenzie, too. He on that song, too. And he's crazy hard, too. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I got so many in the vault, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I, I got a little bit of a change of pace, a change of topic here. But okay. I got, I, I'm low, I'm low-key going to press you about something real quick. Oh, hell. Like, I, have, I have an image here. All I want you to do is tell me fact or cap. I'm going to put the image on the screen. I'm going to let you see it here first, though. Are you punching that home? Are you oh, punching that show. home? Is this <laughs> regulation? Is this regulation for shit real? Show. And I got I got receipts too. For <laughs> shit show. For show. I'm punching I saw, it. Look, man, I know you're athletic. I, I I'm sure you got bounced, but I don't know. Just that the angle, the picture, I was like, I don't yeah. know. No, 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 this no, no, might no, be no, a no, little. No, no, no. That that particular photo, I think it's like nine and a half. But the only reason why it's nine and a half is because see, see, it's because we saying. couldn't raise the rim. Like we was just at some random court and we couldn't like you need like I guess like a broomstick to like. Oh, so, uh, it's yes. Raise yeah. the goal. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't <laughs> raise the rim, so like that's the only reason. It's like nine and a half, but like okay, I got receipts of me like punching shit on ten for okay. show. All right, all right, man. <laughs> Look, I, I didn't I didn't want to doubt you or anything. Nah, I was nah, just nah. as I was doing research, I was like, I don't know. This might be a little. <laughs> this, might, this might be an eight footer. I don't know. Nah, I don't nah. know what this rim is right here. <laughs> you look like you got crazy bunnies in the in this photo though. Shout nah, out, did show. Tommy shoot this? One? Of course. Shout yeah. out Tommy. He like fucking Tommy he got a he got a good angle on that one. Shout out Tommy did it, man. That's my motherfucking brother. Man, we we talked to do you remember we on our last interview we talked about your football coach that disrespected you? Oh man, yeah. There, have you had any like contact with any of that like ever yeah. since then? Cuz I when I was watching it, we said so I think I commented on my personal account like I hope the football coach sees this. <laughs> I hope that ECU <laughs> coach sees this. Bro, I ain't got no ill will towards that man. Like honestly, they did good this year. They uh you know, it like for me like is he still the coach? He is still the right coach. Okay, he is nice. still the coach. But for, for me, it it was a sticky situation because, like, obviously, like, the situation with, between me and the coach was what it was. But, like, uh -huh. it was my brothers on the team. Like, those were my brothers. So, like, True. I wanted to see all of them succeed. And they did. Like, yeah. a lot of them that stayed on the team, like, they eventually got right and they had a winning record two years in a row. Yeah. Shout out my boy Holton and my boy CJ. Those, um, I went to high school with them and then we played in college together. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been able to see them like grow and just become better. And so like, 
that whole situation with the coach, man, like, I let go of shit like that, bro. Cause like, I let go of anything that'll burden me, man. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't try to have no ill will, no beef with nobody. Like, nothing on my heart that's gonna hold me back from what I'm truly supposed to get to. Cause I know mm-hmm. what's what's mine is mine, you know. So like, football was never meant for me to go like all the way, all the way. Nah, it mm-hmm. won't meant like, and that's straight with me. Like, that's straight. Like, for real. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I cause, about basketball. But what I, I love basketball, but I knew I, I wasn't gonna go to the NBA. Yeah, no, yeah. Jordan, I, I really, I mean, it, the idea of it sounds cool, but like I don't think I really wanted it at the yeah. end or to, to go D one even. Like. Yeah, but what I will say is, tell motherfuckers to ask about me though. <laughs> <laughs> tell them to ask about me because I was I was a dog for sure. Oh man, <laughs> it feels like you know, like we we could start wrapping up here, but I feel like. A lot of things that we've talked about today in relation to our first interview, it sounds like you have like grown a lot, yeah, a lot of maturity. and taken a lot of like internal kind of uh, inventory yourself and, sure. and kind of learned some things. Do you feel that way? Do you feel Most definitely because we did that. It was November 2020. Yeah. That's Which, wild. by the way, side note, we shot the video for Moonlight on Election Day 2020. I don't know if you all remember that. But I didn't know. I didn't know I, that. I, I didn't I, put, I, we were, we I didn't. were at that loft, and I remember being up on the ladder, like, like fucking with something with the camera or something and somebody turned on the TV and the election alerts were like on there. I was like, oh, what the fuck? We've been shooting a video all day. A major American event is happening. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, but that's just a side note. Sorry. But that that interview was in November 2020. And now here we are in January 2023. So and you feel you feel that maturity. You feel that growth sure. since then. For sure, bro. I feel like anybody that anybody that's alive bro like if you're not growing and and you're not like Mm -hmm. becoming a better person like mentally spiritually physically Mm -hmm. like you know like you might need to rethink some shit because like at the end of the day we all here for a limited amount of time and i feel like you're supposed to like you know leave your mark and just do like do good so that's really what i'm trying to do like i don't want to stay stagnant so yeah I feel Kinda like I said l- better myself. Yeah, That's honestly, where I'm at. a lot of people relate to that. Um, you got anything else, Tanner? You got any any burning questions? Any desires to ask? Uh, what you got coming up, bro? Oh man, Great I got a question. whole bunch of. Uh, Let us into what's next. So what's next for me, bro? I'm just staying consistent. Like I'm trying to like I'm a, I'm gonna release a lot of music this year, bro, yeah. and a lot of quality music. Um, a lot of shit that I just had in the vault, like that's I just been, kind of been waiting on, like you know, with the perfect time, I guess. Mm-hmm. And like so, yeah. What what people can expect from me is like be more consistent. Like I'm gonna work with a lot of other people this year, um, a lot more content, like a lot of volume for real. And, yeah, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I know it's you said crazy. you love being independent. Do you just you, you see yourself staying independent, like? For the foreseeable future or if a deal or something was uh, laid on the table with like the terms that you are seeking and the creative control that you would like, do you think you would entertain that idea? At the end of the day, I feel like now at this point in my life, like I'm 23. So like I'm a I'm I'm a very like I'm, I'm just like financially. I can't make certain mistakes that's going to be like dumb. You know what I'm saying? I'm not no dumb dude. Like so like if a situation were to come on the table, like. It's got to be like some shit that's going to set me up for like success and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like at this point in time with all the resources I have, like any type of like label situation is going to have to be on my terms. Yeah. And it's just like, will that come? Maybe. But like uh, it don't really matter to me (laughs) for real. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it really don't matter. So, you know, if the right situation comes up, then yeah. But the independent way is just like stress free, bro. Yeah. It's just stress free. I just yeah. do what I create and I just do what I want. So like, yeah. I ain't yeah. gonna lie, this shit nice right now. <laughs> I mean, that's that's great, bro. Like I, I, I'm just only asking the questions just out of just pure curiosity. Yeah. Sure. Usually the the thing with, you know, staying independent or going with a label or not, it, I feel like it all just comes down to funding and right. like you know yeah. whether you got the money to market yourself or just whatever your your goals are. Like you said, mm-hmm. you you're gonna, you're gonna make music regardless. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you, you have all this other stuff going on in your life, but right. you know, music is what you do and you love doing it. So right. it's like, why sign if unless, <laughs> yeah. unless it's like the like some like you said life changing or like you know, I need a meal at least. Yeah, I need a meal at least. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's <laughs> the, the M. I, think, I need a meal. I need an M. <laughs> I think that's super respectable, man. But, yeah, you know, bro. We're, we're like like we've said, bro, you're our boy. We're cheering for you. We respect yeah. you. And My guys. we love your music. 
Love what you're doing. Man. Keep it going, bro. Let's continue working. Let's for sure. Do, we need to get another video in this year. Nah, for sure. We we already we already kind of planning that without y'all knowing, but like okay. we, we was gonna be in the, yeah, we gonna be in contact. Do see right. John been been back and forth, been talking. No, 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 not me and John, but me and my team. Like we already ah. like because no, we know it's love, so we know that whenever we need it, we got it. You yeah, know, what I'm saying? for sure, for, for sure, sure, for sure. And now you've been to the warehouse, so hopefully next time we got the green screen, it's green screen and white wall up, so you yeah. can be one of the first artists to come yeah, use definitely yeah. fully use our studio and shit but definitely bro yeah. yeah bro we appreciate you for a second time coming on on here two and yeah. a half years later two and yeah, a half years we've all later, grown bro. in our own ways yeah most definitely and i, I want to thank everybody for watching for listening to the podcast if you don't already follow us on instagram and twitter at soul serum we got the tiktok we got youtube we got discord twitch streams coming back soon buy some uh, merch buy some merch soul serum dot shop uh Ducey, where can they find you at on the internet man you can find me on instagram twitter uh tiktok youtube shit google <laughs> look up Ducey google gold shit d-u-c-e-y gold Yes, sir. Um, yeah, man. You can find me everywhere. Yeah, appreciate on it. On my 6 9 shit. This is going to be the most viewed interview <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, let me stop. Troy Roy. <laughs> hey, yo. 6 9 yo, I want 6 9 to diss us so bad, yeah. man. I want For him real. to diss us so we bad. 6 that. 9 if you watching this, what's up? Holla at me. We can, we can start a beef or something. I don't know, man. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. As always, I'm your host, Clay Bonin. Co host. Team Avis. Juicy Gold. Yes, sir. We'll yes, sir. see y'all next time. Deuces. Peace.